Hey guys, come for MZ here again. Today we're going to look at a really nice tutorial which involves quite a few things including what are called pulses or signals that last for just one frame. We're going to be talking about some applications with pulses when we use cameras so that they are time independent and lastly we're going to be looking at menus. So we have a lot of things to cover so let's get started shall we? So today we're going to start by we're going to start with just a circuit board. I have it set up here and we've got two grab switches on dissolves and those are going to be some inputs that I'm going to be use, so, using so that I can interact with my logic. So the first thing I'm going to do is place down a counter and drop its target count down to one. And then I'm going to wire it to its reset. So once it's activated it will immediately reset. And then I'm going to wire my first grab switch here to that counter and we'll see what's going to happen when I do this. So notice when I grab it, it creates this really quick signal. So even when I continue grabbing it, that signal doesn't keep uh, emitting there, doesn't keep emitting that signal. And so if I turn this uh, little backstop here to hologram material and wire my pulse signal to it, you can see what we can do with it. So you notice when I grab, it creates a signal that lasts for one frame, and in fact it switches faster than a 0.1 second timer because it lasts for just one simulation frame. Now how can we use this? Well, one of the nice things that we can use it for is with movie cameras. Now if I wire this up to a movie camera and then tweak my movie camera, leave it at cut, make the hold time infinite, and even though this transition time is grayed out, I'm going to set it to zero because it does have a slight effect, and then we're going to disable controller no, because we want to still be able to move around while our cutscene is going, and then I'll skew our camera angle slightly so that you can tell when the movie camera is on. Okay, so now if I drop in and I grab this, you'll notice that it will switch that movie camera on and it will stay on regardless of whether I keep holding or I let go and so on. So then I can run around and this movie camera will be locked in place. Now the only way that we can turn this movie camera off is to trigger another movie camera because it's been set for infinite time. So we're just going to make a copy of exactly what we had up above for the first one and wire in a second grab switch and we'll change this one's movie angle, but otherwise the settings remain exactly the same. So now you'll notice that I can grab either one of these grab switches and it will toggle between the two of them. So I can go back and forth between these two cameras, which is handy and we're in fact going to use that when we do our menu system. Okay, but let's just talk about one thing that we would have to do first in order to turn these cameras off in general. So I'm going to rewind. I accidentally uh, uh, started editing before I rewound and so I had to go back there. So I'm going to copy my first camera so it has the exact same camera angle but I'm going to change the hold time down to zero and this is where that transition time has an effect if you don't edit that even though it's grayed out. Okay, so I'm going to drop in, hit that and now if I hit my second input it's going to turn the camera off because it's gone to that other camera that's set to zero seconds. So that's a nice way to disable cameras that are on uh, regardless of what applications you're using them for. So you could be in the middle of a camera that doesn't last forever and you can turn it off early by wiring to a camera with no time held. Okay. Now we're going to talk about how that can apply for our menu system but first we've got to set up our controls for our menu system. So I'm going to use this direct control seat to control those three possible menu options over there. And to do that, I'm going to use a selector, and that was not a selector. And we're going to pull out a selector with three inputs, three ports, because we have three options there, and I'll just place it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire my left stick up and down to the bottom select input cycle. And we'll drop in and we'll see what happens when I start toggling through here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm hitting down on the D-pad and you'll notice that it is counting up. The reason this it, uh, works this way is because with the selector the default is at the top and then increasing your input is to count down and so it's kind of doing the opposite. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the bottom input for our, each of our white hologram outlines here which is going to indicate which one we've selected and I accidentally missed with the middle one there so I'll come back to that and fix it wire up the third hologram and then put this wire on the right spot on the hologram. And so now if I drop in and toggle through here it works exactly as it should. So if I hit up it goes up and it does in fact wrap around and down goes down and that wraps as well. Okay. 
Now we're going to want to set up a way to recognize when we have triggered one of these options. And so we're going to use an AND gate here. So we'll place down three AND gates. It doesn't matter how you set these up. I do this in my own particular way. You probably have your own way of doing things, and that's perfectly fine. So we'll wire the bottom one to the first AND gate, middle one to the middle one, and the top selector output to the third AND gate there. And our other input for each of those AND gates is going to be the X button. So X will make a selection on our menu. Okay, so let's look at what this is going to look like. So if I hit X on play, it will activate that first AND gate there. If I go to controls, it'll activate the middle one, and so on for options. And that will wire up to whatever you want those to do. Generally, play would start the level or do whatever, and I hope that rest of it makes sense. Okay, but we also want a way to get to our sub-menu here, which I have set up. And in fact, this is going to require another selector. These submenus are kind of a nice way to give your level a little bit of polish. And it's one of the things that I use in my wizard level, as some of you have tried out. So we're going to want to make it so when that third option, or third AND gate, which is set up to options, selects our second selector output. And this will eventually go over to that menu over there. But we'll worry about that in a moment. So we have a way to get from our first menu to our second menu, but we need a way to get back to our first menu. So we're going to set up a couple conditions there through an AND gate to select back to our first menu. So that two input selector, that two port selector, the top one will match up with our first menu. The bottom one will match with our second menu. And so we're going to make the condition, if we're on the second menu and we hit the circle button, it will go back to the first one. So that's exactly what's happening there. If that second port is on in the bottom selector and we hit the circle, it'll go back. So there I have hit options and it is triggered and has made permanent until we reset it, that output going to our second menu. Okay, so now if I hit circle, it goes back like I just did there. And then if I hit options again and then circle to reset, we'll see that our logic is in fact working. Although we haven't completed the illusion yet because we don't have our cameras switching between the two. We will conclude with that, but for now, let's just worry about what's going on here. So notice that even though I'm in my second menu, as per what my logic says, I can still move through my first menu. We don't want that because we don't want people selecting things in a menu they cannot see. So what we're going to do is we're going to place down a circuit board and we're going to wire our inputs to our first menu through it. So you'll notice I took the left stick input that was going to our, my selector and I wired it to a node on my uh, circuit board there. And then I do the same thing for X and then I wire up where my X originally went directly to and I do the same thing for the left stick. So that was originally where it went directly to. Now it goes through that circuit board. So we drop in and we see it works exactly the same and you'll see those signals are going through that microchip circuit board, whichever you want to call it. Okay, now let's make it so we disable that circuit board when we're in the second menu. So I take my first input, so when I'm in the first menu is the only time that that circuit board will be on. So you'll notice we're in the first menu as per what our selector on the bottom says. And if I hit options and go down and activate the second menu, now I can no longer move through my first menu. You'll notice I have signals trying to go through that circuit board, but they are cut off if you look on the left side of the circuit board. So I can't move anything in my first menu until I hit circle to return to it. All right. Now, let's actually make it so this circuit board, or this circuit board, which I have set up already to be our logic for this menu, actually works once we switch to the second menu. Okay, so I've set it up the same way. There, there's a two port selector for our two options, and there's two AND gates just like before. Okay, so now I want my left stick to control my selector here. So I have set up a node that I can just wire to, and I want my X button to be the second input for each of our AND gates there. So that's what I've set up there. And we want this to only work while our um, our second menu has been selected per our selector over there. So you'll notice that when I drop in here and I go to options, it will turn on that bottom port on our two input selector there, which will turn on our circuit board, which you can't see. You can see that things are happening over there and things are working, but we can't really see it because it's off screen. 
Okay. So let's actually set up a way for us to switch views between our two circuit boards. And we're going to do that, or not between our two circuit boards, between our two menus. And we're going to do that by making one of these pulse counters, like we did to start the video. And you'll notice my headset is dying. I don't even know why I had it on. And we'll just make two copies of that, two pulses, one for each menu. And then we'll wire up each of our selector inputs here to one of these pulses. So remember, the top of those selectors will go to the first menu, and the bottom one will go to the second menu. And I'm going to copy our camera over here. We already made it, so why not reuse it? And then wire, uh, wire this cam or set this camera so that it's centered right on our first menu there. And then we'll wire our uh, pulse generator, which is just that one count counter. And then we'll do the same thing with our second menu. We'll wire that camera up so it looks there. And then we'll check and see that it works. And in fact, you'll notice that when I do this, it doesn't start looking at that first menu like it should until I go through the second menu. So I'm actually going to have to debug this a little bit, but you'll notice once I get switching between the two, it works out perfectly. So I hit options and it'll go to my other menu, hit circle and it'll go back to my first one. So then I'm going to rewind and attempt to debug this. So I want that first camera to turn on either when I start the level or when I'm returning from the second menu. So my, my first instinct was to set up an OR gate here. So that's what I was doing. I was setting up an OR gate so that counter will pulse either when I return to the menu or when I get into my direct control seat, which is what this output active thing is for. So once I'm in that, it will do an OR gate and it will pulse this logic to there. So now I was hoping that that would work, and in fact it did set it up so it, the camera looked correctly there. And then when I jumped over here, it worked fine, but then when I hit circle, it didn't jump back. So that wasn't working. And so this is a nice example of how, how your first instinct doesn't always work, which does happen with even me. So I'm wiring that up, and I'm going to try it out, and nope, still not working. That camera should start once I drop into the level, or once I get into my direct control seat. And so I'm thinking here, and I think I have another solution. So what I'm going to do is make another pulse for when I get in the seat. So I'm going to move this back a little bit. Oh, let's see what I'm going to do here. Oh, I was going to try another option where I made three ports, and it started at the third one. Ah, I think this is how it's going to work. So I start. it's going to start at the third input port there, so neither camera is going to turn on. And then I'm going to wire up a pulse to... Well, it looks like I haven't decided where yet. And then I'm going to have to decide I'm going to have to pull out an OR gate here cuz I want this first camera to start either when I've returned from the second menu or when I have gotten into the direct control seat. So I set up an OR gate there and wire up another pulse there. So, let's see if we can't make sense of what's going on here by dropping in and seeing if it works. Okay, so I, I got into the chair. It created that pulse to start the first camera, and it looks like I can go smoothly through my different menus here. So it looks like it's working. Huzzah, huzzah. So a little bit of quick troubleshooting there, because I didn't plan on that, because I forgot that that camera wouldn't start unless I told it to. Okay? So that's where we'll stop, and it looks like I ran out of video, so... See you guys next time, and be sure to visit this site. This is where I call home. It's awesome.